Infamec TX. This guy right here. Is it a budget printer? Is it a direct competitor to the Bamboo Lab P1S? Or the P1P? No. <laughs> um, $300 printer. Is it any good? Is it worth it? Um, it's got the enclosure, so it's got to be good, right? Well, there's some things that I don't like about this, and there's some things that I do like about this printer. Let's get into it. First things first, um, relatively easy to run. Um, setup on it wasn't too bad. The instructions were the instructions were minimal. Really wasn't complicated to get this thing set up by any means. And uh, first print that I ran with it. Came out pretty solid. Obviously, we've got some stringing right here. But we've got our little Anubis figurine. You've seen me print several of these on this channel before. All in all, came out pretty decent. So this is on the TX. At the same time, I printed this on the P1S. Now, I don't want to just do a direct comparison video of the TX versus the P1S because they're really not the same thing by any means. They're both a 3D printer operating in an enclosure. That's really about it. Um, they run similarly, but apart from that, they're not the same. So. I uh, used Orca Slicer for this. It runs off Clipper. It's a Core XY printer. And uh, once you get the settings adjusted on it, it goes pretty quick. Not going to lie. I got it to where it runs just as fast as the bamboo does when the bamboo's on normal setting. So you really can't be too upset about that. Runs quick. Uh, my biggest downside with it is it is... I think just an Ender 3 build plate. So, so we crack this open right here. And this is what we're working with. Now, if you've uh, run an Ender 3 V3 KE or SE, this build plate should look pretty familiar to you. Basically the same thing as this. It's got the little apply glue before printing. I haven't put any glue on here. That might be the cause of some of my issues, but I doubt it. Adhesion to this plate is perfectly fine. You don't need to apply glue by any means. Um, works perfectly fine. But that gives you a build size, a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250. So it does get taller than the Ender series. I think the max they go is 240, if memory serves correct. All that having been said, um, if having the standard size build plate doesn't bother you, then there should be no reason for you to not check this thing out. Um, doesn't come really with a whole lot of extra fancy features. I was really hoping that it would have a uh, camera built into it. It does not. That's not really a make or break for me, though. Um, so it does have Wi-Fi. You can run it through Orca Slicer wirelessly. You just need the IP address of the uh, device. So once you've got it connected to Wi-Fi, you can control it remotely. Um, it's got the touch screen over here. I don't know if you can see that at all. Um, so you've got all of your options that you can go here. 
Touchscreen is actually uh, pretty solid on this thing. It uh, doesn't have a tap awake though. So if the screen goes black and you tap it, if you tap where a button is, it's acting like you meant to press that button. Um, so let's see here. We did, I did a couple calibration tests on this thing. Um, one of them I did the request, did at the request of a commenter. So thank you for the recommendation on this test. So this is the uh, 0.4 or the 04 tolerance test. And so I found this on uh, Aurora Tech's site. I will put a link uh, so that you can download this test as well. And it's got, got the different sizes here. So 0.05 up to 0.125 and then 0.15 to 0.225 on this side so if we drop this in here it goes all the way down perfectly fine so even in the tightest tolerance fits perfectly fine downside though i went through and shaved this off we had quite a bit of elephant's foot action going on here, and you can actually see it right there. And it looks to me like it's more of an issue with the build plate itself. Um, now this did, uh, I did mess with it a little bit, and I tried printing another one out because I wanted to give it a fair shake. So I raised the Z-step on it a little bit, and it ended up printing slightly better. Not a whole lot, though. Still, you've got the weird... But now you've got these weird edges on everything, and you can see the print quality is just not quite there with it. So... I'm sure if you sit there and mess around with it, you can get it to work a little bit better. Um, but basically, can't get it to fit in this way. And it'll go in if you smooch it. But I don't love how this one turned out in general. So... I'm not really going to count that one. This one, you can see just by looking at the bottom there. And again, just take a little knife or something, and you can just kind of scratch that out. That shouldn't be a problem, but as it is right now, doesn't fit in there, will fit in the top. And then when I shaved this down, they'll fit in there just fine. So, apart from the edge, it basically passes the tolerance test without having to adjust anything. So, yes, it passed, but no at the same time. Whereas, ran the same test with the P1S. And we're not seeing any of those same kind of issues. Come on. All right, you can see the edges here are just fine. No issues. And just pop that in. All of our tolerances are fine. Like nothing. Fits perfectly. No issue with that. And, uh... Bamboo even fits on 
fits in here. Whoop. P1S, TX, they both fit, they both work. So thank you for the recommendation on that soccer paintball. Um, if you have any more questions about that, shoot me a message. Uh, you can also send me an email to idiotcraftman at gmail.com. Or if you want the file, like I said, I will have the link for that down below. Um, so I ran a couple other tests um, I did one actual test here, um, but I kind of wanted to just see how how well it runs. So I took a couple files from STL Flix and just kind of uh, ran ran that at the same time as on the bamboo. I really didn't set out to have this be a direct comparison against the bamboo, but. Uh, that's kind of just the benchmark that I'm using right now. That's the main printer that I use, and I know a lot of people out there use that and want to know how it compares. Uh, but I do want to kind of just talk about it on its own. Let it stand for itself. So you can see here, again, we've got a little bit of the uh, elephant's foot situation down here. Come on, camera, work with me today. There we go. You can see a little bit rough on the bottom. Heh, <laughs> rough, because it's a dog. But all in all, looks good. This was uh, 0.2 layer height. Um, you can really see it on this brim here, which it has auto brim set. So it's getting a little bit too much smush there, but... That's fine. That works out all right. And this is a little bit more fine detail than the other piece. Come on. So you can see it it prints good. Like it's solid on the actual prints themselves. I have nothing to complain about with that. Um, so this is just the regular size American Bully from STL Flix. Well, what happens when you decide to blow a print up and make it huge? Oh, also, that's the P1S version. Still looks good. They, if I didn't tell you which one's which, would you be able to tell? I would, I would guess not. They're solid. Looks good. And I dropped a head. Don't you hate when you drop your head? Alright. This is my full size Anubis here. You might have seen the short that I posted about this guy. But, uh, so I printed the stand on the A1 Mini and printed this at the same time and this was before I really figured out all of the uh, speed settings to get it to run as quick as the bamboo so um, even still even if you don't want to set it to run quick like that when you've got this large print looks great Again, printed with a brim. I have since disabled that feature. But, main point that I brought this up is printed this and this on two separate machines. And before those finished, I printed the same scale with the stand on the same build plate 
faster that I was able to print this. This was the P1S. This was the Infomec TX. Now, again, both look great. So quality-wise, I would say this prints just as good of quality as the bamboo for about the same price as an Ender. Um, so let's take a look at the last test that I did. And I'm still tinkering with the process a little bit here. So this is the TX, come on. So you can see all of our little tests here, bridging, all that. I might have to do a close up on this and overlap it. Um, so we've got how short of, or how thin of lines you can do, um, how well it does circles, hard edges, um, spikes, overhangs, angles, bridges, all that stuff. And this actually turned out better than I was expecting. So I printed two versions of this and um, just kind of messing with the Z height offset. And this one was after trying to fix it. And I think I made it worse because you can see this whole area is just way more wonky. So, either way, you can adjust it all through Orca Slicer. The settings are there, but it prints decently. Like, I don't put a lot of stock in these tests. I just run the print that I need, and if it looks good, it looks good. If it doesn't look good, then I take it from there. Um, P1S... You've got sharper corners here. The shapes work better. This thing printed out better. Um, you've got your little... Here, let me see. Trying to not blind you guys. You can see the little color gradient right there. So, turned out good. Um... The bridging right here didn't turn out nearly as good on the bamboo as it did on the other one. So, there, like I said, there's some things that the TX does better than the bamboo. Ran the A1 Mini. Turned out slightly worse than the P1S, but that has no enclosure. And, yeah. So, I'll put a link down below for... Uh, this test if you want to download that as well and remember when you're doing various printers make sure that you label them otherwise you will forget which one's which um, last test the old dragon test so I wanted to do kind of a twofer on this one um, because I do a lot of craft events and sometimes have special requests and, you know, try to get cool different colors and stuff like that. So this is regular bamboo P1S Dragon, um, old filament, so it's a little bit stringy, but you know it, you love it, you've seen it. You bought one, you made one, whatever. Your cousin prints 5,000 a day. This one I printed in color shifting HET G. Um, and this filament is one of the worst filaments that I've tried printing with. It does not want to stick and... Uh, has a hard time with bed adhesion. 
this thing had no problem with it guys it actually printed better i think i think it printed the pet g better than it did the regular pla so <clears throat> you can see we've got our color shift here slight color gradient you know dark blue to light blue and it's almost like this crystal color but we've got no issues on the bottom no issues with bed adhesion things stayed secure the entire time and turned out great so if you want to get one of these to print tp or uh sorry pet g filament if you want to get one of these for pet g filament it works great i will put a link for this filament down in the description and comments below uh you can get it on amazon have it in a day or two it's awesome looks super cool i don't like printing with it because it doesn't like to stick to anything um the build plate holds on to stuff i will give it credit the build plate holds on to everything great i have yet to have anything slip off of it so bamboos I don't especially love the build plate. Um, when it sticks, it's great. Doesn't always stick though. You gotta keep those things super sparkly clean. This one I've kind of almost been torture testing and I've only wiped it down with alcohol once or twice. And I've been running this thing for about a week straight and no real issues with it. So can't go wrong with that. I'm going to show a sped up version of the unboxing and assembly here. And one of the main things that I really like with this printer compared to the bamboo is the lighting on it. So let me put this back inside the Infomech and I am going to put this in the bamboo. All right. Now I know the bamboo is slightly farther away but you can really see this one a lot more clearly than this one you really can't tell anything's in there and i know that's probably not a very big deal to a lot of people out there but for me i like to keep an eye on my print at all times and if i can just glance and see how the print is doing as opposed to having to stop what I'm doing, really look in there, you know, it's kind of frustrating. Part of that, this glass is tinted. This glass is not. I don't know why this is tinted, but it makes it harder to see. You can see that crystal clear. This almost looks like an aquarium, and I kind of dig that. I love the look of this thing. It looks amazing. And I do like the handle on it as well. The door is weird because you've got this opening here. Super weird. And loading it is kind of a pain. I'll show you why right here. First time that I tried to get filament in here 
was kind of a pain. So let's see if it goes a little bit easier this time now that it's been warmed up. All right, so getting it into here is kind of a pain. There's, you can see a little gap right there in that nozzle. So I'm probably gonna have to cut that a little more evenly so that I can get this in there better than it is. Let me see if I can, you kind of got to angle it. There we go. Pricing on this thing. $2.99 plus tax plus shipping and I think shipping was $100 on it and shipping was not quick I think it was almost two weeks before it even shipped out to me and then probably a little under a week after that so they do say on the website expect it within a month if you're not in a big rush and four hundred dollars isn't a big deal to you honestly i say go for it i actually really like the machine smaller build size but who cares um for 400 bucks uh i mean you could get a bamboo a1 the full size for that price for cheaper than that actually um but Honestly, this thing's solid, and it's weirdly quiet. Uh, it is much quieter than the bamboo. Let me just get something going here. Just for kicks and giggles, what do we want to get started? Oh, Velociraptor, okay. I don't remember if my... Or I don't know if my settings saved. So let's see. Let's try slicing this bad boy. 50 minutes that... Does that sound right? Whatever, that's close enough. All right, let's get this going. Um, now, the bamboo usually has a few minutes of prepare time. I think it usually says about six minutes. So that it can do auto leveling and you know whatever anti vibration testing all that good stuff. This one says thirteen seconds of prep time. I should get rid of this guy. <laughs> that would have sucked. All right. anti-vibration test going. I will say this does kick the table around, but that's just a standard office desk. Um, it's going to kick around no matter what printer I have on there. Um, but much quieter than the P1S is. You can hear the P1S sound like a jet taking off whenever I turn it on, and that can be frustrating, let me tell you what. So I, uh, so I got Orca Slicer downloaded, uh, runs Clipper, and uh, I think this is basically just a Flying Bear S1. So that's the printer profile that I used. And I tell you what, I haven't had any issues with it, and it runs just fine, connects to Wi-Fi just fine. I don't know if you heard the fan kick on right there. Um... It does do this weird filament thing. And uh, I feel like this printer is going to take a little bit more maintenance than the bamboos do. But that's fine. Runs great. Looks cool. Runs quick. 300 bucks plus shipping. It's not bad. Mostly passes the tolerance tests. You might have to just tinker with it a little bit. But apart from that, works fine. Um... I got it to where it says that it's going to print just as fast as the P1S, um, but it ran about two minutes longer. Whoop-de-doo. Um, I haven't really pushed this thing to the limits yet. Let me know if you want to see me do kind of a full torture test on it. And... 
Let me know if you have any other tests that you want me to do, guys. Um, if you do want to get one of these things, I actually recommend it. I didn't think that I would. Um, once I found out that it was $100 shipping, I wasn't super excited about that. Um, and then it took a while. But if you're not in a rush, pick it up. That's solid, man. And it looks cool. It's actually my favorite looking 3D printer that I own right now. Looks really cool. But uh, yeah, pick it up. I'll have a link down below um, directly through Infomec. I haven't been able to find it on Amazon or anything like that. So I'll give you guys a direct link. Make sure to click on that and uh, pick one up. Pretty decent. If you have questions, throw them in the comments below. Make sure that you subscribe to help the channel out. I am almost to 500. I think I'm at 480 right now. So it would be a huge help if you guys could help push up to 500. And if you have any questions, any comments, let me know. I try to uh, answer back to any questions that you guys have for me. I like to think that I'm pretty good about it, but leave me, leave me your thoughts on it. If you've got one of these, let me know your experience with it, and I will post a little bit more footage of this in action, and I actually have a video of the Infomec, the A1 Mini, which is behind it, and the P1S all running this test simultaneously, so I printed these all at the same time and I wanted to do a video comparison so that I could see which one finishes the fastest on just the basic settings. So I've got the Infomec, the A1 Mini, and the P1S all going head to head. And let me speed it up and show it to you guys. This took 27 minutes, give or take. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Check this out.